Okay, so maybe you have been thinking about this career path or you just graduated from an art therapy master's program. Today, I want to talk about something about this art therapy career field that no one really talks about even in schools and not a lot of people know about and that is the four different art therapy career paths that you can take. Of course, your work may look different within each path but I found that there are four big categories that you could fall into if you are working within this field. And a little quick note before we get into the video, I do have an assessment or quiz that you can take to figure out which art therapy career path fits you the best. So if you want to learn more, please wait till the end of the video where I share more information about that. But let's get into the video itself. The first path is the employee path, um, more specifically a full-time or part-time employee path. I like to call it the 9 to fivers. <laughs> if you are in this type of path, then you are most likely going to work in hospitals, community centers, clinics, nonprofit organizations, um, in prisons or addiction treatment centers, and schools and even nursing homes. So those are the different types of places that you might be working in if you are in the employee type of path. And you usually will have a 9 to 5 job, a full-time job, um, and 40 hours a week if you are full-time and with health insurance covered most likely and also options for um, retirement plans that are sponsored by your employer. The unique aspect of this type of path is that it is structured. So your schedule is already set for you. Um, you have like repeated things going on during the day or you know repeated schedules um, that go bi-weekly or you already have you know a set amount of client. They give you the clients, um, the client caseload and everything and um, everything like the schedule is kind of set and the client is kind of set the work that you do is kind of set for you um, so you have a, a lot of structure that are already kind of set for you to just kind of jump in and do the work another aspect of this path or this type of job is that you'll get jobs with like a pay ceiling so you have like a limit on uh, what you can really earn or um, the your pay is kind of set and then it won't change that much so that might be a little bit of a downside of this type of work and another downside could also be the fact that you might have to work um, non-art therapy type of work <laughs> so what i mean by that is you might be um, doing a lot of verbal counseling you might be doing some case management you might be doing social work type of job um, in addition to the art therapy work that you actually do with your clients so um, the ratio of non-art therapy versus art therapy work that you will do within a job um, in this employee path is is really dependent on the particular position that you have but sometimes the ratio is like 80 20 or 50 50 um, so you really have to kind of think about how much um, you are willing to do non-art therapy work so if you are willing to do a lot then I, f I feel like the employee path will be for you and one last thing about this type of um, path is that I do see a lot of high burnout rate among people who are in this type of career or in this type of jobs so I think it's because um, our therapists are employed in a lot of nonprofit organizations and it is a lot of times low pay compared to the education that they have and the training that they have so I see that there are a lot of people who can really get into that trap of like doing so much in their work you know taking on a lot of roles and really um, putting so much energy and their time and focus really helping the clients especially who are at risk um, and in that kind of situation it's not unusual to see a lot of burnout so that might be a little thing to consider and think about it when you are in this kind of um, career path the second type of 
path that you could take with the art therapy、uh, career is the business owner path. So this is the path that you take if you are opening up your own private practice. So a lot of people have this idea before you know becoming an art therapist or as they、uh, train themselves. Um, to become an art therapist, they have this idea of like、oh, having their own clients in their own office、um, and just having a private practice, basically. And this is exactly what the business owner path is. So basically, you own a private practice, you see your own clients, and you set your own rates. Well, sometimes <laughs> it just depends,、um, and so you provide art therapy services for your clients, whether that is individual clients, groups, or、uh, couples, or families, or children or adults. I think you have a lot of choice in,、um, like, the limit or the specific population that you want to work with, because it is your own practice. You kind of set the rules for your own. Job or own work, right? So within this type of path, you are actually getting your own clients. So you have to find your clients and get your clients, sign your clients on, and so that means that you might have to promote yourself. You might have to do networking, and you might have to really figure out ways where you can market yourself, maybe,、um, or just have a system where you、uh, have a consistent flow of clients. And you will most likely have your own office, right? So you'll have to manage your own office, rent your own office, or just own an office. And the great thing about this type of path is that you have a lot of things under your control. So you have the things that you own, you have the clients that you you know take in,、um, the rates to a limit, you can control that. And so you have a lot of options to do all, like a lot of different things, like expand your private practice,、um, or even make your private practice a group private practice and hire other art therapists or other therapists、um, on your team, and that may be something that you could do as well. One thing about the rates I wanted to mention is that.、Um, Yes, you can set your own rates, right?、Um, and that is hundred percent true if you do private pay. But if you are taking、um, only insurance clients or just clients with insurance, then you're、uh, being paid by the insurance companies who set their rates. So in that case, you don't set your own rates. Your insur the insurance companies that the client have. Um, set your own rates, so you might be limited in that case, in terms of the amount of income that you can make a year. The one thing that you do have to consider when you are pursuing this path is that you do have a lot of freedom, right, and freedom and choice. But with that freedom and choice comes responsibility. So you are really responsible for your business. You are responsible for yourself, your income, and your clients, and also、um, you are responsible for your own health insurance, of course.、Um, and also, you have to think about your own retirement plan as well, because if you are an employee, then those things are most likely taken care of by your employer. But in this case, when you are self-employed and you own your own private practice, then these are some things that you have to take care of for yourself, and you basically kind of set. The structure for your own business as well. The third type of path that you can pursue within this art therapy career field is the freelancer path. So this is a path that not a lot of people know about, and it's not really talked about either.、Uh, but there are people who do、uh, freelance work as art therapists, and I myself have done that as well after doing a couple years of. Full-time art therapy employee work. I have kind of transitioned to freelance work, which I really enjoyed as well. So within this freelance path or type of work, what you're doing is you're basically contracting with different organizations in your local area. To provide art therapy services for those organizations. So the awesome thing about this is that 
you don't have to get your own client like a business owner um, you just contract with the organization and the organization already has their own clients right and so you're just coming in and providing the service itself and that's it so you don't have to worry about getting your own clients or promoting yourself in a way and also um, the pay is usually higher than uh, a full-time employee type of work so because you are really kind of recognized as a person who has this specialty of art, you know, providing art therapy service, your pay is higher um, and usually the contracting organization who hires you, who pays you, um, does not cover you in terms of like health insurance <laughs> or uh, sponsoring retirement plans and things like that because you're not a full-time employee. Uh, so while the pay is higher, you still have to think about the health insurance and everything like that, uh, just like a business owner. Um, and basically on paper, you are self-employed. So you will be have your W2 form, <laughs> you'll have a 1099. Um, but yes, so the freedom um, that comes with a freelancer is a, you know, is a strength of this type of path. Um, it's something that, you know, pulls in a lot of people, I think, because yes, if you are a full-time employee at one place, then you are, you know, being in one place all the time. Uh, but if you are a freelancer, then you have the choice of going to different places and seeing different types of clients as well. You set your own schedule usually and um, you set your own rate usually too. You have a lot of room for negotiation and also yeah, you, see, you can see a lot of different clients as well. And so you can have a lot of flexibilities with this type of work. Um, but with the flexibility, there are some things that you have to keep in mind, like commute time, because if you are going to different organizations, so, you know, within a week or even within a day, you might be going to several different places, then you really have to uh, put, you know, calculate the amount of time that you're putting in into commuting itself. So that might be taking a lot of time during your work day. And also that might not be covered by your, um, but the organization that hires you so um, those things are, you have to consider and also the things that you own like the supplies might not be covered by the employer or by the employing organization um, sometimes it is covered like they cover you for that sometimes it's not so you have to kind of see um, and really depends on the situation but this kind of path really comes with you know just like the other paths, they all come with pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses and upsides and downsides. But since this type of path is not really well known, not a lot of people go for it. And also they don't know how to go for it. And there's not a lot of opportunities, I guess, uh, compared to the employee type of work that's out there. So if you are looking for freelance art therapy work, you can search for it yourself or you can make your own opportunities yourself by reaching out to organizations and offering yourself. So there's like two different paths that you can take to do this type of work. Uh, but if you are taking the path of like just searching for what's already out there and applying for freelance jobs, um, that's not a lot of like there's not a lot of opportunities like already existing that are like that. So if you are trying to pursue this like freelance art therapy work, then um, most often than not, you will have to really be out there and connecting with people, connecting with organizations and offering yourself to people in a way. So you might have to have a kind of a different mindset when you're working as a freelance art therapist. And the final and last path that I want to share is the online entrepreneur path. So this is something that I kind of figured out for myself and I kind of found this path for myself and I bet there are a lot of other um, 
well, not a lot, but I bet there are uh, some other art therapists or people in this field who are doing this type of work right now. So there might not be a lot of people doing this, but there are people doing it. Um, at least I'm doing it. So, um, so first of all, it is not well known, of course. And second of all, it's very, very different from the other paths that I discussed before. So what I mean by the online entrepreneur path is you're basically creating online content and you are earning income from those content and also from providing services online, purely online. This is kind of what I am doing myself right now. I am creating YouTube videos, I am creating ebooks, and I'm also planning to create a online course as well. And also I'm doing, uh, providing kind of group services and individual services for people who are interested in therapeutic art. So I'm doing all of this online and those are kind of my, that's kind of my way of uh, working and also earning income. And the great thing about this type of work is that you can diversify your income. So you have multiple streams of income. You're not in one place like an employee type of uh, you know path. You're, you're not in one place and you're not getting one paycheck per month, right? Um, a lot of people think like having one big paycheck a month and having that steady income from an employer is a is a stable um, and reliable way of earning income and earning money. Um, but I also think these days that that's not really 100% true <laughs> sometimes because yes, you might have uh, an employer who pays you every month consistently unless you get fired. But but you know some things happen and you know that organization might be restructuring or something like a virus happens <laughs> and there's a pandemic and you know these things happen and your paycheck your one paycheck might suddenly stop right and then you're like i have to find something else and so what i believe and what i think is that when you have diversified income and you have multiple streams of income if you have one stream of income that stops let's say um, then you have all the other streams of income that you can still have right so i feel like when you diversify your income you have more stability but you know it's how you you see it but that's how i see it um and with this type of path too, you can also have passive income as well. So if you have like an online course or if you have a digital product or ebook that you're selling on your website or anything like that, then uh, while you sleep, you still earn money. Maybe someone um, <laughs> online is buying your stuff when you're not really doing anything. <laughs> so passive income and actively earning earned income um, com those two are options within this path. So that's a, a good thing about this. Uh, because this is an online based work, you are practically having a laptop lifestyle. So you can be anywhere in the world. You may be traveling, maybe um, you might call yourself a digital nomad. <laughs> um, so you are location independent essentially. And yeah, this allows you to have a lot of freedom in terms of where you work. You might be working at a cafe, you might be working at a different country, a different city. Um, so that's kind of a flexibility that you have. And another aspect about this path is that you do not have an income ceiling. And um, with this, that like you set your own rates, you, um, depending on how much you do, what you do really, how you do it, you can really exponentially increase your income and there is practically no limit in a way um, and because of that fact or along with that fact <laughs> um, when you do start out it might be unstable financially for you because you are practically building your own business online so just like the business owner path in the beginning you might not have you know 
a huge income. But the great thing is that once you are kind of set in your own space, once you have systems in place, once you know how to get things done, once you know how to put things out and get clients and everything like that, then um, you could have a pretty steady stream of income. And as you develop and grow your business, your income can grow as well. And one thing that I really love about this work is that you can help people globally. So, you know, I sometimes felt kind of limited about the people that I can see and the people that I can help with locally. So I really wanted to work with a lot of diverse people and um, doing this type of work really helped me and allowed me to see very diverse people um, and help people who are on the other side of the globe <laughs> and that's one thing that I really like but of course this type of work and this type of path is not really for everyone just like all the other paths that I discussed um, each path is not for everyone really you have to figure out what you know, really fits you. Um, and for this online entre entrepreneur type of path, you do really have to be creative, like, cause you're creating content online. You have to create images. You have to create, you know, you have to do writing, take pictures, make videos, and really put out a lot of creative content. So that's what you have to do. And also be creative in your business as well, like figure out what kind of services you wanna provide and everything like that. Um, and you do have to be very visible. You have to expose yourself. You have to be um, comfortable with putting yourself out there online for everyone to see. <laughs> so you do have to have some confidence and belief in yourself and self-trust when you do this type of work. Um, and I myself have not started out this path um, because I had confidence <laughs> but I did work on myself and I did grow my confidence as I went so um, of course if you are like oh this path really fits me but I don't have the confidence or I feel like I'm not comfortable with making myself visible online in that way still consider this path because you know you can it can really help you grow that if you don't already have that confidence or um, that comfort level already. So these are the four different paths that you can take within this art therapy career field. I feel like there might be other paths that you can take and you can also make like hybrid paths too. You might be doing two different paths at the same time. I don't know, <laughs> that's also possible. You know, as I said before, you know, each path is not fit for everyone really. So you have to really figure out, you know, what are your strengths? What do you really want? And what do you really need? And what do you, what can't you take? You know, we all have limitations. And so it's a matter of like figuring out how to work with that. So if you're curious about um, what type of path really fits you. I have a quiz or I have an assessment that I created just for you guys who are interested in figuring out what um, is the best fitting for you. So I'm gonna link that in the description box and also the pinned comments below. So make sure to um, check that out and take that assessment for yourself. It's probably just gonna take like two, three minutes and you can find out which path fits the best for you. So hopefully you can try that out. Um, if you have any questions about these four different paths, let me know in the comments below. I would love to really delve into each one of them um, if you really want to know more about them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that this was useful or helpful or informative in some way. And if you did enjoy this, you like this, then please leave a comment below or like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more art therapy career um, informative videos in the future as well. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.